No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico, New Mexico feels like home. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. In this episode, we're exploring some of the city's best features, its urban side and its pastoral side. From horse rides through the bosque to a night of gallery hopping downtown, Albuquerque can make the city mouse or the country mouse feel right at home. Just north of Paseo del Norte and west of the Rio Grande off Coors Boulevard is the Calabasilla Arroyo, a trailhead along Albuquerque's northern bosque serving as a staging area for my horseback ride with Steve Simmons and New Mexico Horse Adventures. Shaded by majestic cottonwoods and thick with willows and brush, the bosque is a riverside forest situated within the city limits. As a resident of Albuquerque, the bosque is a familiar and beloved respite for me but this will be my first time horseback riding along its many trails. This guy is a 13-year-old registered Morgan Gelding. Okay. Morgans love to have a job. Mm. The worst thing you can do to them is, is, is bore them. <laughs> That's when they start acting up when they have too Yeah, much then time. they start looking for something to do. <laughs> but I've had Sky now for three years. I've got his full sister at home, and all the horses I have are Morgans because I just really like the breed. Right. They love to work. They love to please. They have great endurance. They're fairly easy keepers. Mm -hmm. um, they're very smart. In battle for the Civil War, they were fearless. Not mm -hmm. reckless, but fearless. Right. And there's lots of stories about Morgans doing really phenomenal things in the war. Mm -hmm. They're literally just running right through the south, the southern lines, crashing over um, barricades, leading soldiers into charges that nobody thought a horse would take a, wow. take a, a soldier into. The only survivor of Custard's group at the Little Bighorn was mm -hmm. a Morgan. Really? Actually, it was a Morgan Mustang Cross. Mm. We'll get him saddled up for mm. you. And Margaret, my helper here, is going to give you just a quick lesson. And while you're riding him and getting your lesson, we'll get the other horses ready so we can go. Sounds good. Steve offers tons of different riding excursions throughout the state, where you can bring your own horse or, like me, get matched with one. In this job, I've ridden my fair share of horses. And I've learned every outfitter has their breeds they prefer. And in Steve's case, it's clearly the Morgan. And after hearing their story, I can understand why. So to go, you squeeze them and just don't kick them, squeeze them. Okay. Say walk on. Walk on. To stop, we say you sit back on your pockets and say and ho. Ho. Then release. Sky yeah. is a gorgeous horse, and it appears he's amiable to me as his rider as well. Yeah, oh yeah, he's very responsive. It didn't take long for Sky and me to find our rhythm. So before the sun could get any higher in the sky, we decide to head on out. I sometimes forget how spoiled we are to have a wild natural preserve like the Bosque in our own backyard, a dense woodland along the banks of the Rio Grande, our city's very own pristine oasis. And treating myself to a horseback ride along its sandy trails epitomizes the notion of staycation. But the Bosque is not only a sanctuary for humans looking to escape city life, it's an important habitat and migratory stop for more than 500 different animal species throughout the state. Its significance as a true ecological gem cannot be understated. The fact is, no one tends to the soul the way Mother Nature does. On the trail, the sound of the river and the insulation provided by the canopy of trees overhead mutes any traffic noise, keeping the hustle and bustle of the outside world at a distance, protecting us from its hurried pace. Undoubtedly, there are plenty of people in Albuquerque, especially in Los Ranchos, who regularly bring their horses to the trails along the river, or any number of the acequias in the North Valley, to indulge in the pastoral experiences this area offers. But sometimes, the rest of us need a reminder to tap into the bucolic nature of this part of town. And for me, I'm grateful to Steve and his compadres for treating me to a sweet summer's day on horseback in the town I call home. While you're down here, make sure to visit the Rio Grande Nature Center State Park. With access to nature trails, wetlands, and wildlife viewing areas, this preserve was designed by renowned local architect Antoine Predoc and is a gem of the bosque. Ask Steve about his rides to take in other wildlife of the area, like the wild horses outside Placidas. 
After your ride, head over to Corrales for a bite at Hannah and Nate's or Indigo Crow Cafe. Up next, we hit Albuquerque's Main Street. Do you need a reason to hit the road? Find out about upcoming events around the state at NewMexico.org. Stretching for a mile along old Route 66, now Central Avenue, is Knob Hill, Albuquerque's original Main Street. Defined by its streamlined modern architecture and retro neon signs, this vibrant and walkable neighborhood is home to some of the best retail shops and restaurants in town, nearly all of them locally owned, giving this neighborhood its unique flair. From high-end clothing and jewelry to distinctive housewares and local art, the small businesses of Knob Hill are a magnet for local shoppers and visitors alike, myself included. I start out at the eastern edge of the Strip to check out Mariposa Gallery, one of the oldest contemporary craft galleries in the country and a longtime anchor for the Knob Hill District. From sculptures to paintings, mixed media pieces and jewelry, the overall feel of the space is imaginative and colorful, with hints of whimsy throughout. Whether or not you intend to buy, this is a must on your visit to the neighborhood. Just one block down from Mariposa Gallery is Hey Johnny. Self-described as a lifestyle store, the eclectic mix of items in this shop have been sourced by the owners from all over the world, giving New Mexicans access to unique finds typically found in the boutiques of much larger cities. The helpfulness of their staff to find the perfect gift or item is reflective of the personal attention you can only find at the mom and pop shops of this neighborhood. On that note, my next stop is Izzy Martin, an upscale menswear boutique whose selection of denim and tailored pieces exudes a classic but modern aesthetic. With a focus on American-made and well-made attire, proprietor Rufus Cohen has carefully curated a definitive look for his shoppers, and he is on hand to help me create today's ensemble. I want something, I'm looking for something that is dressy casual, has a little bit of pop of color. Yeah, I'm thinking something a little rugged, but okay. refined. Yes, something, you know something me. we can do. <laughs> I'm in good hands. Beyond his impeccable eye, Rufus has mastered the art of making fashion feel both accessible and natural. This is a British company, but they're mm. taking inspiration from old Western shirts and right. Americana. I like the colors in this. It's, it kind of screams New Mexico to me. So let's pick up maybe an ensemble. Yeah. With this, maybe some denim maybe you know, another layer on top. We have great denim, uh, it's raw, Japanese-made denim. Ooh. All right, I'll be a different man when I come out. While I change, Rufus sets the finding shoes for my new look. All right, Rufus, I think we're on to something. Yeah, it's looking good. Like this is nice. Thank you for your expertise. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. you're, um, you're on to something. We could try, do you want to try a different vest? Yeah. How, what do you think about a blazer? One of those? Yeah, let me, um, mm -hmm. ooh, a classic. This is, this is definitely my style. I feel dignified. Yeah, you yeah. look great. All right, Michael Newman, nice to meet you. <laughs> Sold. So, <laughs> undoubtedly, you will walk out of Izzy Martin a more dapper man than you came in, I promise. Knob Hill is not only good for shopping, but eating. Whether it's Bloody Mary brunch at Scala or late night eats at Zinc Cellar Bar, the options are endless. Check out a movie at the local independent theater, Guild Cinema, showing eclectic films seven days a week. Afterward, Grab a beer at Tractor Brewing Company or Kelly's Brew Pub. Coming up, we find a patch of the Mediterranean in Albuquerque's North Valley. Do you take a lot of pictures on your New Mexico travels? Well, if you do, show us by hashtagging New Mexico True on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. In the heart of Albuquerque's North Valley on Chavez Road is Casa Rodeño Winery. Founded just over 20 years ago, this Los Ranchos winery aesthetic hints to our state's much longer and rich history of winemaking our original vines dating back nearly 400 years. With buildings whose architecture and gardens pull from various Mediterranean influences, the property gives a nod to our Spanish roots and visually transports its visitors. Its lasting impressions go beyond the facade though. This winery is cranking out some award-winning wines and their tasting room serves as the perfect introduction to them. And what an inviting tasting room it is. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start with the first wine on our list, which is our Meritage. Okay. It is a Bordeaux-style blend of Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. It's a full-body dry red and our most award-winning wine. So this is this is the breadwinner. It's oh, yeah. a very nice patio wine. Mm. Is that your favorite? That is my favorite. Uh -huh. okay. Although I do have many favorites. <laughs> this is the 1629. This is our signature blend. It is a blend of Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Tempranillo. It's going to have a bit of spiciness due to the Tempranillo, which is a spicy grape. Okay. And it is named for the year that wine vines were first brought over from Spain, from Europe. 
and they were brought into the New Mexico region in the Rio Grande Valley, which makes New Mexico the oldest wine producing region in the New World. In the New World, of course, yeah. Pre-Columbus, post-Columbus kind of yes, thing. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. The Tempranillo is actually a cousin to the original grape that was brought over. The original vine, yes. Every element of this place reflects the Rio Grande Valley's unique relationship with wine, as well as the romanticism of the vintner John Calvin, whose pursuit in elevating the wines of the high desert is evident with every pour. Ooh. It's just the perfect amount of sweet. Although Casa Rodena has earned its biggest accolades for its reds, the whites have garnered respect in the competitive realm as well. And on a beautiful warm day such as this, the Viognier or the Rosé is all the more refreshing. Mm, I like that. So the next one on the list is the Anamante. Our port style wine. Okay. It is a Cabernet Sauvignon, hint of Cabernet Franc base. Nothing like a port to finish off a tasting, but looks like she has something else up her sleeve. Did I just see chocolate Cabernet wine sauce on that label? So go ahead and taste the wine first, oh, wow. then taste the chocolate. Okay. All right. Then taste the wine again. There's, there's a process to this, this now. There is. There okay. are processes. All right. There are rules to Hopefully, our tasting. I got to think about what I'm doing now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm. My chocolate is nice. Does my face not say it all? I am quite happy with this final note. Mm. You can see like it all comes together at one point. Yes. Yes, the chocolate really brings it together. Wow. This might be dangerous. You know, you give yes. a, you know, get some chocolate and some dessert wine. That, um, that is a nightcap. Yes, it is. Speaking of which, the sun is moving the day into magic hour, so I grab a glass of the Meritage and head outside to find a place to sit down and bask in the beauty of the gardens. I find a nice spot just calling my name. In such an elegant setting, under arched doorways and tiled rooftops, a soft breeze in the air, the aroma of flowers complementing the lingering taste on the palate, you could say the entirety of Casa Rodena acts in the way the Anamante and the Chocolate Cabernet Sauce do. It all just comes together to create the most indulgent of experiences. The tasting room also has a gift shop, a place to pick up a bottle of wine or Cabernet Chocolate Sauce for a wine lover or gourmand back home. While you're in Los Ranchos, head down the road to Los Poblanos Ranch to check out their farm shop or make a reservation at their award-winning restaurant, La Merienda. You could also grab a bite at Sadie's, an Albuquerque institution featured on the Breakfast Burrito Byway that has been serving up New Mexican fare for over 50 years. Things heat up for Albuquerque's downtown art scene. Stay tuned. And now, here's another New Mexico true treasure. Hi, I'm Steven Rivera, and I think the Albuquerque Aquarium is a New Mexico true treasure. I like that you can go and see a bunch of different kinds of fish. I like to go and look at the stingray. I, I, I like to wonder what things, things feel like. So you can just go and you can just like pet the different kinds of fish that they have in the petting aquarium. When you're watching the fish in the aquarium, it's kind of like you're in the ocean. If you ever go to the aquarium, you have to go and look at the jellyfish because it's dark and they glow and they're kind of like the blobs in a lava lamp. Sharks. I don't like them because just the thought of something that you're powerless in the ocean and then they have so that's their kingdom so they can just easily attack you. I've never been scuba diving and I don't I don't think I've ever been to the ocean. Um, but it'd be really fun. That's why I like going to the aquarium. And now from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. Downtown Albuquerque is joining the ranks of other urban enclaves known for their art scenes. Stepping up its game, our state's largest city no longer stands in the shadows of Santa Fe when it comes to world-class art, but instead has carved its own niche in the realm of contemporary and emerging artists. On Central Avenue, the city's hottest galleries share the same block, and on nearly any given Friday night, you will find the streets abuzz with people popping in and out of their doors to get their art fix. I made my way downtown early so I could get a sneak peek at 516 Arts before the masses started to arrive. This independent arts organization has brought the arts community of Albuquerque together, generating an immense amount of dialogue and collaboration among local artists, as well as interconnecting them with their global peers. I was eager to speak with the gallery's executive director, Suzanne, to see how they managed to pull it all off. Can you tell me about 
what this place is about. It's a staple in the art community here in Albuquerque, and everybody knows it, but what's the behind the scenes story? We're mostly visual art space. I mean, the venue is set up like a gallery, and we call it a, a hybrid venue. It's sort of a museum style gallery because mm -hmm. they're curated exhibitions. And we do some art sales as a fundraising activity, but the sales is not really the core of our mission. It's about bringing people together and learning. So that's a key distinction from other galleries. It's, yeah. it's the, it's the point is not to you know sell everything, but it's to expose people to other parts of the world or other kind of yeah. artistic expressions from yeah. other places. It's all about the experience mm -hmm. and communication, bringing oh, okay. people together. We present music and dance and all kinds of performance and happenings of different types. So right. it's always a surprise. And she's right. With each new exhibit, 516 delivers the unexpected. The one consistency is the number of people that turn out for the shows. It's not long before the DJ is spinning, the crowds are hopping, and the space is overflowing. I duck out to grab my friend Cloudface, a local artist in his own right, to join me for the evening's events. DJ Halcyon's cumbia rhythms reverberate from the turntables, creating a vibrant atmosphere for ingesting the art on the walls. I'm not a serious connoisseur by any stretch, but I'm digging what I am seeing, and it doesn't hurt that I have Cloudface as my wingman for a night of art appreciation. Once we've covered all the territory at 516, we decide to pop next door to Richard Levy Gallery, a long-standing premier gallery of emerging and contemporary artists. Richard Levy can certainly be credited with bringing international contemporary art into downtown Albuquerque, as well as creating a venue for local artists to shine. But beyond the prestige Richard Levy's gallery holds here at home, the gallery has garnered international acclaim and can often be seen at the more distinguished art fairs around the country. Gallery director Viviette fills us in on the exhibit we're seeing tonight. We put this show together. It's a, a, a group exhibition of 10 artists, all from the greater Albuquerque area. I've learned a lot from him and knowing that the, the, the scene is really burgeoning here. Like it's a lot of artists coming out of Albuquerque and New Mexico Absolutely. in general, right? We have 10 here. They are uh, range from emerging to established artists. Obviously a range of mediums, painting, video, sculpture, photography, and it's been a really wonderful show to have yeah. in the gallery. It's, it's entertaining and some of it's really intriguing. You have to look really close to see what it is. Yeah. It was great to have the opportunity to talk with the artists one-on-one -on -one about their work. Definitely an advantage of going to the opening reception. And the night's not even over. We're heading to Central Features, where some really groundbreaking art is on display. This cutting-edge gallery is newer to the scene but it's already making a bold statement with its socially progressive and environmentally conscious mission and artwork. We are already taken aback by the stunning pieces displayed here, a body of photographs depicting the energy and movement of water. And while the photos are exquisite, how they are created is even more fascinating. Outside, we find the sound illuminator. Utilizing the nose of a 727 jet, artist Sasha Vomdorp has created a machine carrying sound waves to its surface where water is spurred by the vibrations and illuminated by sunlight and LEDs. The forces of sound, light, and water play off one another and he captures it all with his camera. Mind blowing. From water to flames, the methods of artistic expression involving nature's elements are well represented in this exhibit. I can safely say I've never had the opportunity to experience art in this way and all right here in downtown Albuquerque. Thank you. It's called a Rubens tube, and I think it was invented in the late 1800s. Really? Yeah, and it was invented as a physics experiment. It's just a gas pipe with some holes drilled in the top, and right. it's got saran wrap on one end and uh, a little amp, huh. and you've just put the gas into the other end of the line, and the vibration from the amp vibrates the saran wrap, and that vibrates the gas in the tube. It's Pretty that simple. simple, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the effect that it has on people when you can, it's, we were talking about like synesthesia, like yes, having that exactly. kind of jarring experience of seeing what you're hearing and yes. feeling it at the same time with the heat, literally you feel it. Yeah. Wow. These exhibits are ever changing, but thanks to a smart curatorial prowess and pioneering spirit of gallery owner and director Nancy Zastado, you are guaranteed an inspiring experience upon entry at Central Features. You've done us proud, Albuquerque. After an evening of gallery hopping, grab a nightcap at Hotel Park Central's Apothecary Lounge, whose rooftop bar offers views that are their own masterpiece. When getting your APQ art fix, don't forget to check out the exhibits at the Albuquerque Museum of Art and History and the UNM Art Museum. Be sure to check out the goods and artwork for sale at 516 Art Gift Shop, a treat for yourself and a way to support the burgeoning artist community. 
For more great stories like this from New Mexico Magazine, visit NewMexico.org. We're glad you could join us as we explored the cosmopolitan and pastoral experiences to be had in Albuquerque. Whether a weekend getaway or an afternoon indulgence, this multifaceted town offers something for everyone. With that being said, what are you doing next weekend? <laughs>